Welcome. Thanks for joining us this afternoon. Those of you online, thanks for joining us. Um, we're really happy to have our all hands meeting for the start of this school year. So one of the reasons that we're here is because in this particular room, it's because I wanted to get you into student space. This is why we're here. So those of you who wore your CWRU gear, whoo, give yourself a hand. Yay. Yay. Come on. Come on. You can be a little wild today. Maybe not always, but a little bit. You can have some fun today. So um, there are several things that we're going to try to accomplish today. So we're going to try to accomplish a few things today. We're going to welcome you to the new academic year. Uh, we're going to kick off our IT strategic planning process. We're going to talk about back to school information and then celebrating our successes. And then at the end, we have some awards that we want to give out for employee of the year. So welcome back to the academic year. As I said, we want you in the student spaces. We want you to think about what it is that the students are going to experience when they arrive here. Some are already here. Some will be coming soon. Some will be moving in over the weekend. And their parents, themselves, maybe some of their friends, or little siblings might be here. So put yourself in their spot. We're here every day, or close to every day. And I've seen some of you have been here for a very long time. Some of you went to school here and have continued to work here for decades. That's great. But let's put yourself in their spot. Let, think about what they will think. Think about how we can impress them. Think about why IT is here. Why is IT here? Oh, come on, you have an answer. <laughs> what? To serve them. To serve them. To serve the students, to serve the faculty, and to serve the staff here, right? So that they can be productive in teaching and learning and research. And so we need to make sure that we are here, we need to make sure that we have enough energy and that we're excited. So I do encourage you the next couple of nights to make sure you get enough sleep, that you're eating well, that you get a little exercise, and that you're ready to go. So one of the things in kicking off a new academic year is also when I want to kick off the new strategic planning process. The last time we met, we were talking about a new organizational structure. That structure's been put into place. Things are moving along, I think, just really, really nicely. I, I have to say, I, I'm very, very proud of this organization and how you adjusted to a new structure, the new leadership, new ways of doing things. And I really thank you for that. I think you've just been great at that. The next natural step is to really say, what is our strategic plan? What are we going to do? Not just for this academic year, but what are we going to do for the next few years in order to do what we are here to do, which is to staff and students in their teaching, learning, and research, right? We're here to be innovative and help them do that. So we need to do some things to get uh, our strategic plan in place so that you all know what you need to do. You can make decisions. You don't have to wait and ask somebody. You can make decisions around what it is you need to do in order to serve that strategic plan in your day-to-day -day work. So we're going to put that together. That's actually going to do a little bit more than, than just serve ITS. It's an IT strategic plan. So it's going to be a strategic plan that looks across IT across the entire university. Um, Mike and Brian and I met with the CTO community yesterday to kick that off. They seem to be 100% behind it. So I think that, that we're going to really look at how do we, how do we just pull all this, this organization and this IT at Case Western Reserve into our next generation of IT services here. And it also provides a way for uh, me and you and others to talk to the executive leadership here. I mean, often people think IT is all about um, maybe just infrastructure, maybe just keeping the trains going. That is important. <laughs> that is part of the strategy, is to make sure that we are 
providing the great services. But we also need to be able to show what else we're doing in order to get the kind of funding resources and backing that we need, and this will do that. So in order to do this, we are engaging some people to help with this. So um, I really want to have a faculty sponsor, someone on the faculty that can help us take that message to them, help us get the, the broadest perspective we can so that we, can, we understand what the inputs are that we need in order to do this plan. So Stephen Hawk is a professor of planetary ge geodynamics. He served on the research subcommittee here that Roger um, has for uh, research technologies. He's been really involved in technology uh, throughout his career here as a professor at Case Western Reserve. And so he, and he's just generally a nice guy. So he's smart, he's a nice guy, he's a member of the faculty, and he likes technology. So that seemed to be a good fit. So Stephen has joined us and, and will be working on this plan over the next few months in order to really make sure the faculty are involved at the broadest levels. Jess Shoup, I have asked to be our staff sponsor. So she will be working with Stephen and others to make sure that we are getting the broadest exposure possible. My goal is by January, people are saying, I am sick of talking about planning about this IT strategic plan. We need to have the broadest representation possible throughout the university as well as throughout ITS. So Jess, is, Jess will be working to help make sure that we get that coverage, to help make sure we get that voice, and to help get this thing uh, put together. Brian Boss, who is here with us today, um, Wave, Brian. You probably remember him from a year ago or so. Um, he he uh, served as interim CIO, for those of you who may not have been here at that time, for a few months. And so Brian, who's a close friend and, and colleague of mine over several decades now, we won't, we won't <laughs> say how many because I can't be that old. He might be, but not me. <laughs> no. So we engaged Brian as a consultant. Since Brian was here for, was it three months, I think, that you were here? Two? Two months? He had a good, he has a good foundation and knowledge of the university already. So we didn't have to, you know, hire somebody that we would have to then reproduce all of that. So Brian is, has done several of these plans. Uh, we did one together, um, and he's done one at LSU and then one at Maryland, and has a lot of experience. And he's a really good, fast writer. So we have engaged him to help us with both the planning process and the writing of this plan. So if you can't see that, it's a little bit on purpose. <laughs> but this is my timeline. So what you guys do to me. What was that? <laughs> January 1, what year? No. So, so what we are doing, we're kicking this off. So we're trying to get the month of August to actually get all the planning things in place. All the tools, everything we need to get going should be done at the end of this month. We will then begin to engage with various communities on campus, various committees, various people, um, all of you to start to gather all the input that we need in order to get this plan put together. We will do that probably for six to eight weeks, somewhere, somewhere around in there, and then begin to draft an early draft of the plan. Once we get that draft, we will then take a quick look at it, edit it, and then we're putting together something that Stevens called the red team. So the red team will be some people that either are highly engaged, or maybe are a um, nomination from their dean or from the provost to edit that document. Do we have it really covered? Do, have we done the things that we need to do? That document then will go back to Brian and he will edit that after we, we take some edits, he will do that. And then we'll get a final draft, if you will, that we'll take around, dance it around the university again, say, is this right? At that point in time, I think we can start to plan and work. 
while we finalize that draft, and then we will have something ready to go summer-ish. So I want this to go as fast as possible. And I think we have no time to waste. I mean, you, know, you all know this. You, you've had a couple of years of kind of just hanging on there for a while. We need to catch up. And not only do we need to catch up, we need to pole vault. We need to get a big jump ahead. So um, we're, we're putting this together. We're asking for some help. We're, we're trying to get as much as we can. I'm going to um, meet with all of your senior directors. Um, Jess and Steve and Brian and I will meet with them on Friday. If you have ideas before that, they are supposed to be creating a list of things that they know <laughs> that they want in this strategic plan, so feed that. But that's only input number one. As you find things out, we're gonna probably have an email address you can just send things to. If nothing else, you can always send them to me because we need your input into what it is that we do. So, um, quick questions about the process, what we're doing? Okay, so get ready, because once we get this plan, we're gonna go, and we aren't gonna stop till we're done. So, um, I think this is a good, a good place that we are in right now, and I think we're ready to go. Um, we do have a couple of new employees since we met last that I wanted to introduce. So, um, Shana Perlman, she's back on the camera. <laughs> Hi, Shana. <laughs> you have to turn, wait, come around, get in front of the camera so the people online can see you. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh. Okay, uncoordinated. Okay, so Shana joined us as Assistant Digital Video Specialist just July 1st. Um, she actually provides operational technical support as a member of the production team and is responsible for video production elements and components that support news and promotion to the university, um, its business units and related events. So she'll be um, reporting to Mike Comstock, or she is reporting to Mike Comstock, and we welcome Shana. And so, Thank you for your first um, all-hands meeting as being behind the camera. <laughs> Michael Maltby. Michael here? Stand up, Michael. <laughs> Gina was already stand up. So Michael joined ITS. He's an information insurance analyst. Um, he joined us on July 6th. Um, he works on the information security team under Tom. And um, to, he's here to protect the confidentiality and integrity of customer, employee, and business information. He um, performs daily security operational tasks, including uh, security threat monitoring, data and risk analysis, security policy development, participating in leading risk assessment activities, responding to help desk tickets, development and implementation of enterprise security controls, and the delivery of advanced security awareness to training. So he's, he's going to be busy. Um, he's reporting to Tom and is in Bellflower second floor. He current, or he came to us um, from the FBI, so in the Cleveland field office, and his most recent position there was with the FBI Joint Terrorism Task Force. So I don't know about you, but I feel much safer now that Michael is with us. So thank you, Michael. Welcome. So we have several things that, that we need to get going with here. Um, I, we've got some, some time to talk about what's coming up in the new school year. And Tyler, I believe, Tyler Hoffman is here to talk about that. Oh, there you are. And Tyler, you need the microphone? Yeah, I'll do Pam first. Oh, Pam sorry. first, sorry. <laughs> do you want this? Um, yeah, I'll give that to Tyler. I also talk loud enough that I don't need a microphone. I know that. Hey, you did. What? Yeah, I get it, but I, I still think I talk loud enough. You need it? Okay. All right, anyway. 
Um, I'm going to go over some of the, mo the move in day Sunday logistics right now because that is our biggest event. We are at 20 different events. Actually, I think it's 23 different events over the time period for back to school and they range from everything. But move in day is our biggest one. So I just want to go over that um, with you right now. So Sunday morning, 8 a.m. is when people start uh, ITS people will be at the Bellflower House. That includes desk site support and those volunteers. And for everyone who has volunteered for it, thank you. I've gotten the question of, can it be a time period less than a you know, four or five hour commitment? And it really can't be. Because just getting to the Bellflower House after 9 a.m. will be very, very difficult. And then it'll take you time to get there and we will be moving people around, so it'll be very hard to keep someone only for an hour, two hours. I appreciate that you want to come down a little bit of your time, but we really need like four or five hours of your time, so I'm sorry we can't make it any shorter. However, it is a lot of fun. I've been doing this for years, and it is really a good time talking to the new students, talking to their families, so I definitely recommend coming down. Uh, traditionally, we have worked out of the Bellflower House, which is the blue button there. Uh, that's because the care center was there and we were trying to draw people there. We had another tent outside of Wade Commons where the students were picking up their keys, but really we were trying to draw them to the care center. Because we no longer are using that as a base of operations, we are now moving to the three red dots up there, which are by the first year um, residence halls. The desk site support team has already been doing this, going to the quad areas of there. We are going to be there as well. We're going to have tents up there, uh, a table that will hold all the literature you need, the freebies we're gonna give away, and Tyler will show you a picture of that. We also have uh, pop, water, pop, different drinks and snacks to lure the kiddies to the table. Um, yeah, we know how to get to them, and the parents also, though. You were shown, I, I shared the cheat sheet with you, and that is really a, a good uh, just overview of what is likely to happen at any of these events. Those are the kind of questions that will be asked, and those are the kind of issues that will occur. So um, really just want to make sure that, that you know what's going on. Yes, you, there is an activity later that Tyler will go over, but don't turn over the page, Ron. I know, I saw you looking. Don't do it. Anyway, sorry. Um, so Sunday, that'll start at a.m. They start getting their keys at 9 a.m. and the traffic just keeps going. And it keeps going until 5 o'clock when they stop handing out keys. We will then clean up and then we go out. We go out and get a bite to eat and even a beer or two on the, on the university. <laughs> if you didn't know that already. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Surprise! Right, I know. <laughs> but uh, it is a long day, but it is a very fun day. Um, are there any questions on move-in day? Anything I didn't cover there? Uh, we do have two other events that are actually happening starting at 11 a.m. on Sunday, which is the KSL will be open, the care center. So we will be directing people to go there. We will have it staffed. There's also a cell phone and bank fair in Twing from noon until about four o'clock, I think it is. So we will have at least one staff member there or a student member there answering the questions that might come up there. Um, so we will be all over the campus Sunday. Anything else? Okay, Tyler. All right, thanks Pam. So the marketing team always enjoys back to school season because we get to have the most fun when it comes with all the giveaways that we're gonna be handing out to the new students. So the first thing we produced this year was this new to crew booklet. And I left some examples on the back table. Uh, we have to reserve most of them for our graduate students and other events that we have coming up this week and the week following. So we'll be sure to pass these out to the entire division when we run our next print. This is pretty handy. It's only about eight, page long, eight pages long, and it really consolidates on the primary services from how to get on the network to how to download software, that kind of thing. 
This is totally Sue's idea, so I can take zero credit for this, but this is the uh, adhesive mobile pocket. It's actually pretty cool. It's a 3M product, and it just goes to the back of their phone. It'll work on their Android, Windows phone, iPhone, whatever that they have. Um, I've been testing it out with a couple other folks in the division. It's really nice because you can take it off. There's no residue or anything like that. And it'll emphasize our new to crew website, which is uh, going into its second year of age this year. And it's a great interactive resource, so very much like the printed guide. Students can go there for more information, engage with our different services, that that kind of thing. So this will be at all of our move-in day, uh, kind of basis of operation that we'll be passing out, giving it to parents, families, students, that kind of thing. Anybody who's cool enough to volunteer gets one of these t-shirts, which Mike already plugged for us in his message. And so we're going with a Heather Navy this year, so forgive that it's on kind of the light blue background there. Uh, and that's you know to keep in brand compliance with the university. Uh, but anyone who does volunteer on move-in day, bring your case ID with you. We're going to have orange lanyards to hang around your neck, and we're gonna put your ID in that lanyard so it'll help the shirt pop a little bit while still being somewhat brand compliant. And John Berzes, who many of you may not know, he works over at Cedar Avenue, raise your hand, John. He designed all these resources for us. He did a fantastic job, as always. So the biggest piece of feedback that we received from all of you when we sent out the volunteer call for participants was that, hey, you know, I work in network engineering. I work in online learning. I work in these different areas where I may not interface with the rest of the division on a regular basis and know about what products and services we really should be touting to our new students when, I, you know, when they come to campus and when I'm volunteering. So stole this idea from Jeremy Cool. You have in front of you a crossword puzzle that we put together. We should have passed out some pens as well. I think we had some trusty folks. If you're missing a crossword puzzle or a pen, just kind of raise your hand, and they'll come over and help you out. And just take about three minutes to do this real fast, and just want to make sure you kind of have a rough understanding, you know, kind of get yourself surprised about how much you really do know about technology services here. Do we have anybody missing one? Anthony and Kristen and Alex are walking around. Alex, can we get Mike one over there? Right in the white shirt there. Right there behind you. Mike Hubert. There we go. We have pens too if you need them. We're getting rid of old contraband marketing material, so forgive the CDI, ITS, co-branded pens there. We need some Jeopardy music playing in the background. Uh, to people who commented on the uh, cheat sheet, I will absolutely, those were great comments, and I'm going to um, respond to them so that we can update the information. Okay, about a minute left. Ryan has his head up first. Typical. Okay, it looks like most folks are wrapping up. So let's go ahead and shout out some answers to these real fast. So one across, what does the R in Care Center stand for? <laughs> does it fit? Does, yeah, if that fits, we have an issue. <laughs> there we go. For, Oh, yeah, so like Pam was saying, so the C stands for customer, A stands for assistance, R stands for resource, E for education. So four across, where can students access course schedules, curriculum information, and student records? There we go. Five across, 
What is the first word, the name of the antivirus software that is provided to the crew community at no additional cost? <laughs> That's Symantec, there you go. What is the name of the website that students can go for video-based training tutorials on software, business, and creative skills all at no cost? There we go. 11 across. Undergraduate students have printing credit incorporated into their tuition. What is the name of the campus-wide printing system that they can use? WIPA. Extra you know, points if you put the uh, Asante goo over the E in WIPA. 12 across. What is the name of the wireless network to which crew students, staff, and faculty members should connect? Case Wireless. I hear a guest. Case Wireless. How much storage space can students use on Crew Google Drive? Unlimited. Unlimited. Now to down. Number two, where can students go to download more than 40 applications at no cost or significantly reduced pricing? There's a space between software and center. <laughs> That's too funny. OK, three down. Where can students purchase technology devices and services at significant educational pricing? eStore. E what is the name of the service that enhances the security of your crew account by using your phone or connected mobile device to verify your identity and prevent someone from accessing your account even if they have your password? Tom Sue. Yeah, it's, Tom Sue. it's Duo Security or Tom Sue if those letters fit. <laughs> Great. Eight down, what is the name of the crew provider for email, calendar, and other collaborative applications? Alphabet. <laughs> yeah, Alphabet now if you have stock in it, but otherwise it's Google. Okay, what is Case's primary learning management system which allows instructors and students to host course content online? Katie. There we go. And then 10 down, what is the name of the service that allows crew student organizations to build their own websites? OrgSync. All right, so hopefully by this exercise, you learned that you know more than you thought you do about the different products and services that our division supports every day. So real quickly here, just want to go through a couple quick slides. I purposefully did not change these slides. This is exactly how it's presented to our students in our multiple orientation events that we present at. So first we hit them with what is information technology services. You know, we're stressing that we provide the university-wide technology services. We have Tom's group responsible for keeping their accounts safe and then providing unlimited technology support. Speaking of technology support, help.case.edu, right? They can live chat with a technician. They can give us a call anytime, day or night, 368-HELP. Or they can come visit us now in the lower level of the Kelvin Smith Library, open until 10 o'clock at night, Monday through Friday. How cool is that? University network. So they're connecting to Case Wireless, right? And they're logging in using their network ID and password. And then the wired network, pretty cool. They can register their device on um, before they even come to campus using the uh, new student checklist uh, that we participate in. So the VPN, using the same time they're accessing library resources, journals, the software center from off campus. We got the new second password field, which indicates Duo security. So we're always keeping the, you know, this on top of their minds now, you know, letting them know that they just download the app, answer the push notification, or they can hit SMS and have it texted to them as well. And they put that code in the second password field. Email, so a lot of good stuff about email. Really pushing students now to download the Gmail and Google Calendar apps for their mobile devices rather than fiddling around with IMAP and that kind of thing. Speaking of Google, so we have Google Drive, unlimited storage. It's a huge benefit for us that we're really trying to promote on Move-In Day and other activities. Google Calendar, Hangouts, that still exists. And then Google Sites. <laughs> I don't actually say that when I present, I swear. I have a good line for Google+. Plus. Research technologies, in case they're working with any PIs where they'll have the opportunity to interface with these different services. Technology equipment, so Dell, Apple, AT&T, Sprint. Great opportunities there to engage with higher education pricing. Software is huge. Nothing hurts us more than seeing students walking over to the bookstore on move-in day and paying for Symantec or you know, paying for $300 worth of Microsoft Office. So always wanting to let them know they have those 40 titles available to them for, you know, at no cost, we like to say, instead of free, that way, you know, at no additional cost, there we go, or uh, you know, significantly reduced pricing. 
So in terms of information security, lots of good slides on that. I think these are Tom Sue approved. Even the red, never share any of your passwords ever, that kind of thing. How to download antivirus, again, making sure they have that to use the network. Laptop security cable, you know, one thing the police department does a good job of doing is telling the students to make sure they're not leaving their laptop around, walking away, you know, while they go get a cup of coffee. And then for their residence halls, the security cable is a great option there. Talking about phishing, you know, recognizing the strategic importance of that, you know, recognizing that information technology services or the university will never ask them for any personal information like their network, um, their password, that kind of thing, over the phone or by email. And then lynda.com, huge advances in lynda.com. They were acquired by LinkedIn pretty recently, so there's a whole bunch of great features students can take advantage of. They can put a certificate of completion on their LinkedIn profile if they complete one of these courses. The mobile app allows them to take all this high quality training offline, so if they're traveling or anything like that, they can still engage with this training. And then finally, we hit them with our social media information. <laughs> Thank you for laughing at that, I think it's funny too. <laughs> There we go. So that's what we're hitting them with all the time with these different orientation events. So I hope this answers some of the questions that you all had when you were you know, responding to volunteer requests, that kind of thing, and saying, wait, I don't feel like I know enough. Hopefully this demonstrated that you know more than you thought you did. So with that, Pam, do we have anything to add? All right. This is the best time of the year for us. We know it is for you as well. So we look forward to seeing you out there at all the different orientation events. There's over 20 of them this year, uh, which is an increase over the previous years. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you out there. Thanks a bunch. All right, well, we started this um Actually, last year, and I think it's really important, as we've talked about as an organization, you know, we do a tremendous amount for the university, and, and oftentimes we don't take the time to actually sort of acknowledge, right, all the effort that everyone in this organization puts in to help to move the university forward. So we want to actually take some time today, and we're going to, same format as we did last year, for those of you that weren't with us, we're going to kind of go through the year sort of month by month and, and sort of highlight um, or sort of uh, talk about highlights from each month. And we want folks to sort of stand up that we're sort of involved in that. And we want to take the time to sort of appreciate that. Uh, OK. I'm not sure what this is. I had... Before we get started, we just. Here you go. Here's Lolita. <laughs> Before we get started, we wanted to recognize all of the new people that joined the staff in uh, fiscal year 15. So Willa, Sue, Katrina, Lisa, Gary, Lee, Shana, and Mike Maltby, they joined our staff. So welcome to all of you. In addition, there's a number of contractors that are here today that are integral to you know, everything that we do. So we want to thank all of you. And if you don't mind, at least raising your hand. And so again, a round of applause to all of the people that make all this happen. All right, thanks. OK, so in July, um, basically we have our second annual Active Learning Fellowship. So anyone who is involved in sort of working with our Active Learning Fellows, if you could stand up, that would be awesome, please. And our student information system was migrated to the AT&T Data Center. So also, please, everybody that was involved with that, please stand up. And we kind of give everybody a round of applause. OK, we need to try this again. We need to give these people a round of applause. Come on, folks, let's be excited about this. This is good stuff. All right. Much better, thanks. We need to be enthusiastic, right, about the great things that we're doing for this university. In August, uh, we constructed two new active learning spaces and five technology-enhanced classrooms. You know the drill, folks, please. <laughs> the back-to-school programming is delivered. New to crew website launched, right? Efforts around security risk and mitigation following direct deposit phishing attacks. So lots of good stuff. Please, everybody. <laughs> All right, in September, PeopleSoft Financials migrated to the AT&T Data Center. Rockefeller, Olin, White Buildings upgraded to 10 gigabits. 
uh, AV support for numerous events, including the, the Tink Grand Opening. Please, folks. All right, in October, National Cybersecurity Month program. Final ERP applications migrated to the AT&T data center. Crawford and the KSL data center firewalls upgraded. Um, taking the lead on healthcare quality improvement launch. Lots of students, we've had a lot of good success in our MOOCs. Single sign-on was upgraded, science DMZ architecture established. Please, stand up, folks. Okay. I'm, so I know there were more than four people involved in sort of all of those activities. <laughs> all right, in November, one community, FiberLink migrated from Crawford Data Center to one community, Juniper Router. FISMA controlled secure research environment hardware installed and completed the ITS inventory process improvement project. Paul, thanks for doing all those things for us. Appreciate that. <laughs> all right, in December, uh, ITS Service Desk achieved HDI Support Center certification again. Not a small feat. Uh, effort to replace outdated animal resource tracking software with eSerious begins. Uh, WWW hardware upgraded and $5.5 million capital plan approved. <laughs> All right, in January, uh, Priority Review Board transitioned to include multiple constituencies as part of a major project prioritization process. Unified Communications Phase 1 completed, and Blackboard Learn uh, upgraded to the newest release. All right, thanks for playing along. In February, identity management uh, project kicked off. Uh, ITS constituents completed 207 rubrics towards major project prioritization process. There was a lot of information that came through on that. Cross-functional ITS team presented webinar, lecture capture, 300 attendees. Uh, Educause Review, a clinical social work published key papers on active learning at Case Western Reserve University. Thank you to all that involved in that. Ah, part two. <laughs> Wood building, upgraded to 10 gigabits per second. CW Administrative Professional Series relaunches 154 attendees. Clinical informatics components of FISMA controlled secure research environment completed. <laughs> In March, first annual Cyber Infrastructure Day held at CWRU with over 100 attendees. ITS, uh, actually the care center, we moved to KSL. Uh, Adobe Connect upgraded to version 9.3. Uh, MediaVision courseware, Echo 360, surpassed 500,000 total views uh, since its adoption three years earlier. Uh, and Dell Research Storage rolled out. In April, dual security becomes mandatory for VPN access. Uh, Bingham Building, Network Distribution Hub, upgraded to 10 gigabits. People saw financials, upgraded to version 9.2. Uh, multiple teams represent ITS and Research Showcase. Uh, LDAP was upgraded. OnBase extended to the Office of the University Registrar. Huron Conflict of Interest launched for ORA. In May, CW released at, revealed as Microsoft's official higher education partner for HoloLens. Uh, exploration of learning management systems launch. Uh, ITS division reorganization announced. And in June, uh, multiple technology enhanced classrooms refreshed. Secure online learning authorizations or exemptions in 37 states. Uh, Crawford Hall, Commons Area and Bellflower House renovated, migrate the President and Provost Office email to Rackspace, uh, staff technology upgraded as well. <laughs> so 
So there's probably not a single person. Um, ah, ongoing efforts. Okay, didn't know this one either. 40 buildings upgraded. Uh, thanks, Tyler, for adding this in here. With expanded wireless network coverage. This has been a huge undertaking over multiple years. 40 websites uh, built or converted to Terminal 4 site. And manager. All right, and something that, that actually um, my Comstock has made us aware of. So um, the MediaVision team actually won um, five Tele Awards um, this past year for work that was done, uh, video work that was done on behalf of the university. So this would be sort of the non-broadcast equivalent of an Emmy Award. So lots of good stuff and lots of good collaborations and, and sort of helping tell the university story. So let's give that team sort of a round of applause as well. Okay, so one of the things I want to say before I kind of pass this over to Sue is there there's probably isn't a single person in the room that should not have stood up at some point, right, or at least sort of felt a sense of pride in sort of how they contributed to one of these initiatives over the course of this past year. And many of these that were cited are really just sort of the big items. There are so many things that, that you all do on a, on a daily basis, right, that contribute to the mission of this institution. And I think it's important for us as an organization to recognize that, not just once a year, but every single day. So thank you. Thanks, Mike and Lolita. So I want to underscore what Mike just said. It's, it takes everyone, and it takes everyone to make this team work. So thank you again for all you do. We are going to recognize a few individuals today, but those individuals probably couldn't do all that they did without the rest of you as well. So this is a team, and we all win or we all lose. So I want to just focus on that. Make sure you understand that. But there are some people that have done just some extraordinary outstanding work that we want to, to recognize today. If um, you're here, I'd like for you to join me on stage right now. So the July Employees of the Month, Kevin Chan and Dave Weilocker. August is Jay Kennedy, Tyler Hoffman. You got to stand up here with me. Feel the love a little bit. Come on, let's go. Come on. <laughs> September was Dwayne Bible. Uh, October, Kevin Chan, Dave Kavasik, Ed Rines, and Riley Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> November, uh, we had Paul Kalanis and Tyler Hoffman again. Oops. Uh oh. There we go. Uh, January, Kevin Chan. <laughs> Greg Stewart and Dave Weilacher, again. <laughs> and then February, we had Lou, uh, Shingari, Mark Heron, and Mike Worf. <laughs> oh, that's a really good point. April, <laughs> there's one. Ken, Ken Adams and Maggie Clark. <laughs> Sorry, what? Ramya should have been up here. Oh, I'm sorry. February, Ramya should have been up here as well. Ramya? Yeah. Okay. May, Dave Boxler. And then June, we just announced, is Ruth Cannon, Mike Chalkwater, Dave Kavasek, and Ed Rines. So, uh, Laura wants a picture, I think. So, here, everybody get together. Get together here. Got a team picture. Got our uniform on. You know? I don't know. Ken might need to go several times here. Ken <laughs> needs to go several times? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe need a better camera. <laughs> Okay, 
Thank you. So, you, okay, you can stay here for a moment. Well, okay, you can go sit down. So, we're going to talk. What happened to the thing? <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're going to talk now a little bit about the employees. That you can, you can take their seats if you'd like. The employee of the year. I got to tell you, it, it's hard to pick an employee of the year. So we, we picked two. And so these two have really exemplified the kind of work ethic, the kind of effort, and all of the things that it takes to be the employee of the year. So one of those, I'd like you to join me on stage right now. And Laura, if you want to bring the awards up, that would be great. Um, Dwayne Bible. Thank you. So Duane embodies, I think, the definition of responsibility and accountability. It's been exemplified by his performance in coordinating technology and services for numerous, numerous complex, high profile, and strategically important university events. The sheer number of those events is astonishing. This year, Duane served as producer, event coordinator, technical consultant, team leader, and ITS liaison for an impressive list of events, including the Board of Trustees meetings, which are not always fun. But that was my, my added there. <laughs> the annual commencement, momentum, and the list goes on and on. Each of these events stressed Duane's talents and included new significant challenges ranging from supporting events held in the new Tecumville University Center to coordinating wireless internet services for attendees of an event held outside along MLK Boulevard in the Cultural Gardens of Cleveland. In addition to the responsibilities previously mentioned and along with his many other media vision duties, Duane assumed the role of subject matter expert for video conferencing and telepresence support which was left vacant at the end of last year. Duane spent many late hours undergoing a crash course which focused on how to provide engineers support for those technologies. Along with his constant professionalism, teamwork, and dedication to CWRU and ITS, Duane has been selected as ITS Employee of the Year. And I must say, every time I see this man, and I see him a lot of times, he's always smiling and he's always doing his best. So thank you, Duane. Thank you. The second employee of the year is Dave Kavasik. So Dave has a real knack for balancing a number of high profile, high impact projects with day to day operations of supporting identity and access management for the university. Dave is very focused on the division's success in supporting our staff, faculty, and students, and affiliates and alumni in a very timely manner. He contributes every day with his excellent problem solving and pattern recognition skills. Dave pitches in when people who are out of the office and cares deeply about the well-being of ITS staff. Dave will always make time to help someone in need and is not hesitant in sharing his 33 years of knowledge. During this past year, Dave was instrumental in beginnings of our major overhaul of the identity and access management systems. The first two projects of the overhaul were to successfully upgrade of LDAP and single sign-on, which touch everyone in the university community. These two systems are at the heart of our access and all of our core applications. If they are not stable, we know about it, right? <laughs> it's not a good thing. Dave participated in the RFP process for selecting our new identity management system and served as one of the SMEs during the discovery workshop. The new system will be implemented during the next fiscal year and Dave just went beyond the boundaries of Case Western Reserve University and provided development for RAVE which allowed CIM to expand their coverage of emergency communications to every student. 
There are many more projects where Dave has been, Dave has been a success, a key to that success, and we thank you, Dave, for everything that you do for us every day. So, your two employees of the year. I think, I think you should open your, open your gifts here. And I know it's probably awkward standing up. You want me to hold something for you? No, I'm fine. <laughs> He's got it. And Dave always has candy. Dave always has candy. Dave always has candy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> Do you want me to hold that? So they have these nice trophies. Thank you for your hard work. And then they also have frame certificates. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. So we have um, wrapped up our agenda. It's a little bit early, so it's going to give you an extra added hour of your day to study up on your crossword puzzles and get, <laughs> and get ready for. Um, for Sunday. Um, we, we are ready to go, ready to hit the, the ground running on Monday and um, getting this, this academic year off to a great start. So thank you all, thank you for your attention, and most of all, thank you for your work. Go do great things.